Is it possible for a Christian to commit a terrible sin? We're going to look at that in today's daily devotion. I'm Pastor John Blevins. It is Saturday, June 13th, 2020. I'm thankful that you're here with us for another devotion. So let's dive right in to God's Word as we look at Matthew chapter 26, verse 75. And Peter remembered the saying of Jesus, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. one of several of our our study texts that are down in the description. Um, I hope you'll take time to read that full section there, that chapter, especially towards the end, at least understanding that that passage where Jesus, he warns Peter, says, you're going to deny me tonight three times. Peter does it. Sins terribly. He weeps. Study passages, study texts are down in the description, come together and they give us our theology portion that we are going to look at today in Westminster Confession of Faith, chapter 17 of the Perseverance of the Saints, section 3. Nevertheless, they may, through the temptations of Satan and of the world, the prevalency of corruption remaining in them and the neglect of the means of their pers- preservation, fall into grievous sins and for a time continue therein, whereby they incur God's displeasure and grieve His Holy Spirit, come to be deprived of some measure of their graces and comforts, have their hearts hardened and their consciences wounded, hurt and scandalize others, and bring temporal judgments upon themselves." So is it possible for a Christian to commit a a terrible sin? Yes, it is. It's not possible for a Christian to live a lifestyle of sin, for that to be the fruit that they bear, which is a sinful lifestyle. But it is very possible, and it happens, that Christians sin. And even commit terrible sins. I know, sadly, a lot of us will kind of go, well, yeah, I know we sin. I mean, I sin too. I, I get mad at the dog. You know, I get mad at whatever. But it, it's very possible. It happens that the Christians even commit terrible sins. That's what we saw in Matthew. As Peter commits a horrible sin three times, he denies he even knows Jesus. Jesus even told him it was going to happen. And of course, Peter, being one who's been saved by God and is in Christ, he just is broken overwards. Afterwards, and looks to Christ, and we see restoration later in the gospel account. Uh, as God, Christ forgives him and restores him, but, but it was a terrible sin nonetheless. As we read in our theology portion there, we see that, yes, it's very possible. Uh, now, that, that, that terrible sin does not cause someone to lose their salvation, but it does bring great consequences. And we think about David's sin with Bathsheba and causing his friend, Bathsheba's husband, to die in battle so that he might take his friend's wife. He does, and there's terrible consequences that come from that. Now, David didn't lose his salvation, but there were horrible consequences that were the outworking, and I'll leave that to you to go read and study yourself. So yes, God's grace is bigger than even a Christian's terrible sin. And it is possible, very possible, that, that if you haven't already in your life, that one day you may commit a horrible sin. And in that moment, you need to remember that you have, you need to flee to Christ. 
You know, don't, don't run from Him. Run to Him in His grace. And when we see other Christians, we need to be reminded when we see them, them fall that there are going to be consequences. And one of the things that's really sad is, is when a, a man who's been called, especially to a position of pastor, and he sins greatly, Sometimes, as far as we know, it's just a one-time fault. But it's a terrible sin, and the consequences oftentimes can be the destruction of his marriage, the destruction of his family, the destruction of the church that he was serving. Horrible things can happen. There are great consequences. And we see the Lord often work in those and and bring about uh, great Great pictures of grace and, and restoration, uh, but sadly, uh, too often there's a, a, a drive to skip over all of that, and, and it happens. There's other uh, the drive is to to try to uh, skip over the consequences that come from sin, and we want to just think about well. Well, they're not going to lose their salvation in this, so of course they. We, we should keep everything going, and you know, we should keep them in their position. We should keep moving, but we've got to remember, as we read there, there are consequences that happen. You, you can commit a terrible sin that is not going to cause you to lose your soul. It's not going to cause you to go to hell, but but there can be great consequences. And we, you Christian, when these things happen, we must trust in our sovereign God. And know that He will sustain us through the consequences. It is not a time to flee from consequences. It is not a time to try to cover things up. But instead it is a time to cry out to our great God for His grace to sustain us. As we ask for His forgiveness and then we ask, as we've already looked at in the past, we go to those who maybe we have sinned against and ask for their forgiveness. But but in the midst of that, may, may we never... What am I going to think about today? Meditate upon. May we never be those who would seek to flee from the consequences of things that we've done. And may we not be those that would seek to cover things up for others. Whatever the reason may be, that would cause consequences not to come to light. There is grace. But also, we need to remember that justice needs to be done. Of course, this is a big, broad brush that I'm painting here. But it is a a healthy reminder that the consequences, we should not run from them. Now, by God's grace, we'd never have to deal with them to begin with. But if that day comes, and we're either the one who commits the sin and have asked for forgiveness, or we're involved and see someone else committing that sin, and they seem to be truly repentant, uh, let us restore them to the fellowship. But let us never seek to erase, bury, or cover up so that consequences don't happen. Horrible things, horrible things come from that. So yes, it is possible for Christians to commit terrible sins. God's grace is bigger. His forgiveness forgives. But there are consequences. We need to remember that. And God's consequences should not be run from nor covered up. Well, think about that today. Consider it. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, we know that you are sovereign over all things. And we ask now that when we find ourselves breaking your law, sinning against you and others, may we immediately stop and repent and flee to you. And by the power of your grace, may we May we deal with the consequences of the mess that we've created so that we might glorify you, not out of protect us from having bitterness or anger, but instead may we rejoice in your grace. Amen. Well, it's great to be with you again. Hope to see you again very soon. May the Lord bless and keep you.